Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, super excited for tonight's episode. It's going to be like a mishmash of like a million different things. Um, but go ahead and grab whatever you need to get comfy and cozy this evening. And I'll see you back here in about 30 seconds. Hi, everybody. So excited to hang out with y'all this evening. Um, like a whole lot of different things to talk about. <laughs> uh, today is October 25th. Um, I hope everyone's having a good week. I know um, I often talk about this, but October is a hard month and morale kind of dips in October. So um, we see you. We we feel you. Um, but hopefully um you're having a good week so far. Lots and lots happening uh, at the IRC right now. We've got, of course, all of our uh, free workshops are going on uh, at different times of the day. Some are during the school day, some are after school, and those are free. So make sure you always stay tuned to our social media feed so that you see what workshops are available. Um, a few quick announcements. I wanted to share with y'all that our friends at the AIM Network, AIMS Network, uh, which is the um, Association for Illinois Middle School uh, Educators um, and Leaders, that they are having an event, um, and it's going to be November 7th in Lyle. So we're really excited about that. I will be there that day, um, and I have a session uh, that... I can't remember if it's in the morning or the afternoon, but I'll be there. Really looking forward to that. That will be so wonderful and so much fun. Also want you to remember that we've got our um, BPAC information series. Those are free. Those are virtual. Again, uh, all of that information is found on our website. Uh, so please be sure to check that out. We also have our registration is live for the Multilingual Illinois Conference this December in Oak Brook. And we're so excited to be back in person. Uh, and I know I've been chatting with some folks uh, here and there. And um, I think we're just we're hungry for that, right? For that time to kind of be together and get our learn on together and network and ask each other questions and like ask each other for ideas. I love, love, love uh, this conference. And you guys, I think this will be my first one like as an official team member in person uh, because so far for me since I joined IRC, it's been just virtual. So I am like <laughs> just jumping up and down. So, so excited uh, for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you can uh, get a team registered and join us. For all the fun. Um, so tonight's topic is a little bit of everything, you guys, because I don't know about y'all, but my brain has just felt like a ping pong ball. <laughs> and at first I was kind of like mad at it. Like, you know, you just need to like focus on one little thing. But also I want to like respect myself too, because if October is, you know, historically a difficult month and I'm finding little pockets of joy and goodness, then you know what? I'm going to just hold on to the pockets, right? Like, <laughs> uh, so I think that's okay to do. So that's tonight I'm embracing the little pockets of joy. So that's why it feels maybe a little bit <laughs> fragmented this evening, but that's okay. Okay. That, that is all right. We're going to roll with it. So first I want to share with y'all a few different, um, books that I've been super excited about. And I think I've talked about this one before but if you are in a dual language school which means if you have one dual language classroom you have a dual language school right and if you have one dual language school you are a dual language district i always hear dr jose medina saying that and i'm like nope <laughs> um so anyway this book this is like almost like the follow-up book and i'm looking at my bookshelf to see if i can find the original um and it's not jumping out at me right away. Of course, I'm as soon as I, I turn this off tonight, 
I'll find it. But <laughs> um, this is like like kind of the follow up book to the original Breaking Down the Wall. This is a Corwin book. And this one is called Breaking Down the Monolingual Wall. So if you are in a dual language program or a bilingual program, um, you got to grab this. <laughs> um, all of the authors, if you could see, like all of the like powerhouse authors, we've got Ivania Soto, we've got Margot Gottlieb, uh, we've got Andrea Honigsfeld, we've got all of these incredible, incredible authors uh, contributing uh, to this book. So definitely recommend. And I do have a Corwin discount code. If you do, if you order from the Corwin website directly, like don't look at other um, like vendors. Um, and I believe it's all caps social 25. It'll get you 25% off and free shipping. I'm like, if it says free shipping, I'm all in. <laughs> if it's like $3 shipping, I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> um, and I want to share with you guys, I got three new children's books. And if you don't know, like I am, I love children's books. I like long for days where I could just go and sit on the floor of a bookshop and just read picture books, especially um, because there's just so many beautiful picture books out there and it's hard to keep tr track of them all. But, um, you know, like when you scroll on Amazon and like you start looking at different titles and then other titles will pop up, like you might also like this one. Um, I was really, really, really excited to see this one. This is called Say My Name. Um, and this is the same author. She wrote, um, let me pull it up. She wrote the books uh, Eyes That Kiss in the Corners. Can you see? I don't know. I'm so bad at this. I always laugh at like influencers on like Instagram because they're so good at holding stuff up to the camera and I'm like so not good at it. Anyway, this is the same author from these incredible books. Um, but this one is called Say My Name. Ah! So, you know, I love books that talk about the importance of our names, but can I just read this one little snippet to you? My name is full of tones and rhythms, melodies and harmonies, chords and cadences, each syllable, each sound as a building block in an architecture constructed over oceans and across generations. Say my name. And each page ends with say my name. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely beautiful. The illustrations are also gorgeous. I'll hold up the illustrator's name here, but definitely a great one to add to your classroom library, your school library, all of the things. Um, very beautiful. I would recommend that one. Makes a great pairing with a lot of the other books that we really love about um, the importance of pronouncing our names correctly. And I will say too, because I know a lot of middle schools um, and um, well, no, just I would say middle schools because like many times we we switch like uh, different uh, elective uh, classes uh, partway through. This is a great time of year to reintroduce this idea of um, or like reemphasize the idea of uh, let's check in and see how we're pronouncing our names correctly. Um, so this one is one I've seen a lot of people post about this one. And to be fully honest, I haven't even read this one yet. Um, but I was just so excited. I didn't want to wait to talk about it. <laughs> um, but I got such good reviews on Amazon and this one is called, uh, my teacher has tattoos. Oh my goodness. Um, and so can I show you this? So the back of the book says this after Xavier or Javier, uh, actor Xavier catches an unexpected glimpse of his new teacher's tattoos. He learns that there's more than meets the eye in stereotyping and the cultural significance of tattoos. This story is based on real events that took place during Darren Lopez's first year teaching in Washington, D.C. OK, so the author, the author wrote uh, this book based on his experience as a teacher as have like having tattoos as a teacher. Um, so I am so excited about this one. Again, the reviews all over Amazon were like so, so good. I cannot wait to read it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, definitely a good one to add to your classroom library. And then this one is so good. This one is called I Can Be All Three. I can be all three. So if we take a look at just the cover, right, we see this beautiful girl looking at different kind of images. And in this book, it is absolutely phenomenal because the author walks us through the story of this young girl 
who is uh, like kind of gearing up for like a multicultural day at her school. And so she's trying to figure out like which piece of her identity, which culture in her whole identity does she want to like use to represent herself? So like that kind of like that, that idea of you just have one culture. No, like we all have many different cultures that we belong to, right? If we look at across our family and our different circles that we belong to, right? We have all of these different pieces of our identity. And so in this book, she goes through, look at this, look at this. You guys, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> she goes through different pieces of who she is. That was so bad. I'm sorry. Um, but I just think like the title kind of captures it all. Like um, I can be all three, like all of the different pieces of my identity are so important. And so look at this, look at this. So as again, as they're gearing up for this multicultural day, uh, her friend Jenny says, what will you make? My hands go still. What will I make? And so we see just the blank page, right? And then it kind of goes through and she's like celebrating all of the different pieces of her classmates, cultures, and all of these things. And then there's this beautiful author's note. This is, again, a really great thing to share with students after reading the book. Growing up, I was never sure what to say when people asked me where I was from or which culture I belonged to. When I grew older and became a teacher... I saw that many of my students had the same challenge. So beautiful, outstanding. I just made a TikTok about this one because I'm like, this is my new bestie. Love, 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 love this book. It's so good. Okay, so those were my book recommendations for you guys. I told you I'm going to be a little bit all over the place. The other thing I want to share with y'all uh, this evening is just a few different tools. So you've heard me talk about um, like this tabletop tool. Um, and let me grab, I have my little things that I do. Okay. So I've got my little, um, like sentence stems and frames, um, that I usually keep inside of this tool, but I was just in a district and we were talking about early childhood, uh, and like preschool programming and how we can utilize the tool to update, you know, uh, kind of create some early childhood friendly, um, like icon cards kind of. But you've seen me post these, right? I've got a card for collaborative sharing, for support requests, for conversation invitations and idea generation. Um, and again, like I have them just on different colors because I like colors. I respond well, my brain responds well to colors. Um, so I have those laminated and then I just pop them on a frame like this from like Amazon or wherever. Um, Party City has them too. I like the Amazon ones better. And then I just get like a one inch ring and then I keep them out on tables all year long, which is great. But I, uh, and so those are on my blog and I've got those now in like, I think six languages, maybe seven. Um, but anyway, I wanted to just share this because as I made this for the, um, this one particular district, I was like, well, let me just share this too. Um, you could also create, doesn't have to be like full on sentence stems and frames, right? It could just be like a little symbol like this that says our table is ready. So again, if we had to like clean up our stations or if we had to like, you know, get ready for science or whatever, like whatever it might be, uh, we might flip and show the teacher that we are ready. So once we're all, we all decided, like we all did everything that kind of gives a little layer of group accountability too, right? Uh, and like helping each other out, like make sure you do this, make sure you do this. Uh, and then I also have just like a yes, no option, right? So that's nice and easy. Now, if you are teaching our littles, this would also be a great thing to just include like the letters or sounds that you're working on that week. Um, so again, you probably would have put a whole bunch of these, but just whatever you're working on for that week, uh, just so that it's like an additional, um, you know, additional space uh, to have those sounds represented. You could also use this for um, your vocabulary, whatever vocabulary you're working on for that week, that unit, that month. Uh, months are great because then you don't have to change these out as often. Um, so I just gave a few different examples if we were looking at uh, growing different things. So tree roots, leaves, flower. Okay. So again, just wanted to kind of share how you might be able to utilize the same tool, but for uh, younger learners. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you guys is this. So this is just a little mini tool. Okay. Uh, popsicle sticks from 
dollar trees, dollar twenty five trees. Um, and then this is like a little name tag that I got from Amazon, like a big old pack. I don't remember if it came in a 50 pack or a hundred pack, but it's like a name tag, literally like you would, you know, like we would cut this part out and like hang in on our lanyards, right? Um, but this is a really fun tool because you can use it a few different ways. Uh, you can use it to uh, reinforce vocabulary. So if I just had little icons based on something that we were reading or based on something we were listening to in a video, depending, right? Um, I would just pop it into the little name tag. And then as students listened or heard it, or as we're retelling, right, they might hold that up. Um, so if I'm retelling a text, maybe I just have like different parts of the story represented, like just again, via one word, <laughs> or I could put like a full sentence depending on the age, right? Um, and then as the students are listening and as they hear it, they can hold it up. So it has that layer of listening accountability. Or again, for speaking, um, if we're retelling or recounting a story um, and we're putting it all in order, if I put even like one, two, three, right? Like as my numbers, um, I could hold up of like, this is what happened first. This is what happened second. And then, you know, second, we made bread or whatever. Um, but so here's what I did. I put just like a piece of uh, shipping tape. I like shipping tape for a lot of things just because it is a little bit stronger. It's a little bit heftier. And if I have a lot of little hands on this, um, you know, it can break easy. To, so don't use scotch tape, use the shipping tape. Um, but what I can also do with this is if I have older students, I could just pop in like a little post-it here uh, and then I could use this as a write and wipe. Oh, I don't even have my markers over here. Otherwise, I would, I would just write on here because it's like that plastic material, right? I can just write on it either myself as the teacher. I could write on it in advance and just pass them out um, or I could have students write on it and then wipe it, right? And then they hold up their answers. And it's just like a nice little novelty item too, because again, October and February is a great time of year to incorporate a little bit of novelty because if you're excited to teach it, if you're excited to use that tool, the students will be excited to use that tool too. So this is a fun little easy craft. Um, and there's just a million different ways that you could use this. You could also use it for a this or that uh, type of activity. So if you had like two options and again, either you write it just with a dry erase marker or you pop it into the sleeve so that, you know, students can see exactly what you want them to say or whatever um, or answer choices. Um, and they would either have to decide like, is it this one or is it this one? Right. So maybe they all had two and they had to respond with what they thought it was. Um, but again, so many different options. You could also have students like split up, you know, split these two choices into a partnership. So like I'll take one, you take the other. And then we have to discuss if there's two options on the board. We have to decide, is it your answer or is it my answer? It's mine. So then I hold it up. So again, just fun, easy and very inexpensive too. very, very inexpensive too. Uh, and then the last one, I think I told you guys about these recently. Maybe not, though. Um, so this is the little sound buttons. Um, and you can get them in a four pack from Amazon. And they're just so fun. I think there's like so many different ways that you could use these. Um, but listen to this one. You can do hard things. You can do hard things. So all you do is like there's a little button on the bottom and it says record. And so if I like, let's see. I don't even know what to say. It's wind down. Oops. It's wind down Wednesday. I forgot to, let me try it again. I have to wait for the beat. It's wind down Wednesday. Okay. It's wind down Wednesday. Isn't that fun? So again, a little bit of novelty, which is great this time of year, but you could use this for stations. You could use this for directions. You could use this for sounds like, um, uh, you could use this for vocabulary. You could have students record on it or you could record on it. Each one takes like a AAA battery. Um, so you'll have to get, if you order something like this, you'd have to order all the batteries that go with it too, because it doesn't come with it. Um, but I have this one. I, I don't know if I play this one. It just says you can do hard things. Um, you could put affirmations on there. But anyway, I think it's just like a fun little purchase. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of different possibilities with that. All right, you guys, 
Um, I have a few other tools, but I think I might save those um, for next week. I told you guys I'm a little bit all over the place this evening, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to hold on to my pockets of joy and we're going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So don't forget, don't forget to uh, register for the Multilingual Illinois Conference. Uh, if you are a middle level educator, if you are junior high or middle school, uh, we really hope that um, you will join us at the Ames Network event on November 7th in Lyle. Uh, and then make sure that you are staying tuned for all the information about the um, BPAC series, which is wonderful. All right, y'all. I hope you are having a great week and I will catch you all next week. Have a good one.